Hi, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm showcasing the Simon's Stamp Card Kit. I will be showing you what's included in the kit and then I'm going to share a couple of ideas on how you can use the products. I do have a giveaway for this card kit on my blog so make sure to visit, you will find the link down below and enter the giveaway. So first of all you will get a pack of those uh, watercolor pencils. There are 24 pencils and you get two or three shades for each color along with greys, a black and a white. Now remember that you can mix them with water so you can get even more colors than the ones that you see here. You will also get a bottle of craft tacky glue. This is white glue. It has a nice thin tip and it's going to last you for a long time. And remember you have to peel off this little plastic thingy to make it start. Now let's take a look at the paper pad. So like always you get 6x6 paper pad and this is by Moda Scrap. It is an Italian company and they have lovely designs. So you will get uh, uh, backgrounds with uh, soft watercolor washes. You will also get stripes. Some of the pattern papers have flowers, others have leaves and all in lovely purple colors in uh, soft uh, green and pale blues. You also get three envelopes, all of them coordinate with the colors of the paper pad. You will also get three designs for you to color. This is watercolor paper with flowers, so you can use the watercolor pencils that come in the kit to color. And here is the big stamp set. The Simon's Stamp Card Kits always have a lovely big stamp set. You get lots of flowers, lots of leaves, a lovely border, along with many sentiments. You also get this 6x6 glitter paper. This is a die that cuts out the word hello, one of those dies that you can use again and again on your cards. And let's take a look at the cardstock. Four different pages, all in coordinating colors with the rest of the kit. For my first card for today, I will do some uh, coloring with the pencils that were included in the kit. So I'm starting out by coloring the first petal of my poppy here. And uh, I'm starting with a darker shade of red and now I'm going to move on to a lighter one. I'm going to cover up completely the whole petal but you don't have to do that if you want to leave some white areas. And I'm not pressing the pencil at all. Just to show you the different look that you can get. So now with a water brush I'm going to apply some water and blend out the color. I'm starting from the lighter color and then I will move on to the darker shade at the center of my petal. Now, just to show you the difference, for the second pedal I'm going to go more heavy-handed, so I'm pressing my pencil there and you will see that even when I apply lots of pressure, it's going to blend nicely. So again, combining two colors, a lighter and a darker red, and then with a water brush, first make sure that you uh, blend out the lighter areas and then move on to the darker shade. And now if you compare the two petals you can see that the second one looks more vibrant so depending on how heavy you go with a pencil on top of your paper you can get different looks depends on what you like to do. So I did color the rest of the petals using the exact same method by pressing harder like I did for the second petal because I liked the look more. Now the center of a poppy is normally black but I decided to go lighter so I wanted to get a softer look that's why I'm combining two shades of brown a lighter and a darker one completely random as you can see and then I'm just going to blend everything out with my water brush for the center I'm going to do the exact same thing and then for the stems I am going to combine again two different shades of green a darker one at the top and a lighter one all the way to the bottom and blend it out again with some water. I'm not going to color anything else from this design, I just want to have this poppy, so I'm going to use my scissors and cut it out very carefully. I will not leave any white border all around, I'm just cutting where the black line is. And if you want to make sure that your cutout looks nice and neat, make sure that you go all around the edges with a black marker to cover up any mistakes and to get rid of that white edge. And since I have a watercolored flower as my focal point, I'm going to use these watercolor stripes from the pattern paper as my background. So I'm going to cut it to size and I have here a white card base. I'm going to place it on top, making sure that I have a white border on each side. 
I'm also going to do some stamping. This is one of the sentiments from the kit. And since it has all that black, I'm going to stamp it two or three times, one on top of the other, to get a good impression. Now you can use your scissors and cut out around that sentiment. I decided to separate each and every line. So I'm just going to chop off in between. You can also use your paper trimmer to cut those out. I am good in cutting straight lines, especially when I'm using my big scissors. So I'm just going to chop everything with that. And finally, it's time to put my card together. I'm sticking the sentiments on top. And by the way, the poppy is popped up on my card by using some foam tape at the back. And to complete that watercolor look, I'm also going to add some white splashes. You can do that with any white acrylic paint. I'm using a watered down gesso here. And here is a close up look on the first card for today. Moving on to the second card and I will combine these two pattern papers. I think they match beautifully with each other and uh, I'm going to do some stamping. For that I'm using the border with the leaves from the stamp set and I'm stamping that with my Versamark ink. Then I'm going to apply some white embossing powder and heat set it. I am going for a very soft looking card following the soft look of the papers. Now I'm going to add some color inside the leaves just a little bit and only at the base of each leaf. This is going to help them stand out against the background. And uh, since this is just uh, paper and not watercolor paper, make sure that you don't press the pencil too much. I apply just enough color there so that I can easily move it with my brush without loading it with too much water. I need to avoid too much water since this paper is really thin. However, I am able to move the color and blend it out for a lovely soft look. So here is how it looks. It's still wet, so I'm going to leave this to dry. And now for a very simple design, I'm going to put my card together, placing this panel on top of the flower background paper. And then I'm going to stick the word hello that I have cut out with the die from the kit. And I absolutely love this die. This is one of those die cuts that you will be using again and again on so many cards. And I didn't use gems on the first card, so I have to use some on this one. For that I'm going to use these little pink uh, gems and I'm going to add one on each and every one of those leaves. So although this is a very simple design, I think this is going to add something extra on my card. And here are some close-up photos on the last card for today. Don't forget that I have a giveaway for this card kit, so make sure to visit my blog and enter. And these were the cards for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Don't forget to leave me a comment, to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.